Okay, well, I can't stop making videos, obviously. Um, but what I will do is, since I've had uh, uh, recently uh, somebody do a two-hour video defending James and and calling me out and doing an attack video on me, well, this is fun. <laughs> I'd like to answer every question. The first thing I'd like to ask in you know, you'd say that you want to defend the book of James. But let's take a look at um, the fact that James was not only disputed, a disputed book. It was disputed by Erasmus. It was disputed, it was one of the most disputed books that there was. And Luther actually disputed it too. And that's why it's at the end of the scriptures. There was a, dis a, a distinction between books that were disputed and books that were um, uh, considered uh, sola scriptura or, or or the canon, and here we have it, where uh, Luther Luther talks about putting in uh, uh, a separator, if you will, between these books, and basically um, um, the 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 Epistle of James, and this is the preface, preface from Luther. Though this epistle of St. James was rejected by the ancients, I praise it and consider it a good book, which I do, because it, it sets up no doctrines of men, but vigorously promulgates the law of God. However, to state in my own opinion about it, though with prejudice to, any, to anyone, I do not regard it as a writing of an apostle, and my reasons as follows. In the first place, it flatly, it is flatly against St. Paul and all the rest of Scripture in ascribing justification to works. This is Martin Luther, this is not me, and other church father. It says that Abraham was justified by his works when he offered his son Isaac. Though Romans 4, St. Paul teaches to the contrary that Abraham was justified apart from works, by his faith alone before he had offered his son and proves it by Moses in Genesis 15. Now this goes on. But first of all, let me let me just back up on one of the things that was uh, given here as a reason why James must be scriptural. It's here in 2 Timothy and it says in three eight in Second Timothy three eighteen, all Scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. But you see, that's a snippet. Let me let me give you a little bit more background. First of all, this was a letter written to Timothy, so the all Scripture here, all Scripture, right? does not apply to the collection of books we call the canon of the Bible that was put together later. And if you think about it, if you say all scripture, then you might just as well include all the Catholic books that were taken out by Luther and the Apocrypha that was actually disputed by the early church fathers also because there were hundreds of books that were written that were, did not make it into the Bible canon. So to say at this point that all scripture is God breathed and it all belongs in the Bible canon would give us a very big Bible. There's your first mistake. But let me pull out a little bit bigger one. You see, if you look at the larger context of this, you have to read back to verse 10. You should always go a few verses back to see what it's talking about. Okay, let me go back even further. It talks about these bad teachers that oppose the truth, and they are men of depraved minds who, as far as the faith is concerned, are rejected, but they will not get very far because, as in the case of those men, their folly will be clear to everyone. You, however, know all about my teaching. All of a sudden, Paul is talking about his teaching and my way of life and my purpose, faith, patience, love, and endurance persecutions, sufferings, what kind of things that happened to me in Antioch. Now he, an he first mentions Antioch, then he says Iconium and Lystra and the persecutions 
I endured. Now, what were the persecutions that were endured at Antioch? Well, that basic idea, Antioch, and it's right here, okay, is what spurred the idea that, 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 that Timothy should watch his doctrine and check the, the, the scriptures and Paul's teaching. Why? Because in Galatians chapter 2, okay, it's Paul opposes Peter or Cephas, Kepha, to his face. When Cephas or Peter came to Antioch, this is Galatians chapter 2, verse 11, I opposed him to his face because he stood condemned. For before certain men came from James, James, well, wait a minute, he suffered something in Antioch from, from what? From certain men from James. He used to eat with the Gentiles, but when they arrived, he began to draw back and separate himself from the Gentiles because he was afraid of those who belonged to the circumcision group. If it had not mentioned James, that these men came from James, okay, it basically pointed out that James was the one that was the head of these men. And in Jerusalem, you see that when James was talking about all the believers, they were all zealous for the law. And it never says James wasn't. As a matter of fact, James made Paul do a, a ritual to try to save him from getting mobbed. Now, so this happened in Antioch. And we both, we can also find this in Acts chapter 15 and verse 1. Certain people came down from Judea. Who was the head of the church of Judea? Who was the head? Jerusalem, you know, Judea. They came to Antioch. James was the guy. So certain people came from Judea to Antioch and were teaching the believers, unless you are circumcised according to the custom taught by Moses, you cannot be saved. Now Paul, okay, basically says in the first chapters of Romans that Jew and Gentile are alike. They are both saved by grace through faith and not through circumcision. He says circumcision is nothing, not through following of the law, but by faith and through grace you are saved because nobody can follow the law. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. This was, this was the whole premise of Romans from, from beginning to end, especially Romans chapter 3 when, he's, when he was pointing out that Jew and Gentile get saved the same way. So if you try to say to me that the Jews were saved different than the, than, than the Gentiles, then basically you, you're, you're opposing Paul. This brought Paul and Barnabas into sharp dispute and debate with them. Wait a minute, Paul and Barnabas? Remember that this, Paul and Barnabas were also in, in Galatians, right? Right, there it is, Galatians, in the book to the Galatians, it says right here that Paul, Paul opposed Peter, and he, he, he said that, but when they arrived, he began to draw back uh, and separate himself from the Gentiles. And he was afraid of those who belonged to the circumcision. And the other Jews joined him in his hypocrisy, so that by their hypocrisy, even Barnabas was led astray. This is Galatians, and this is Acts. And it says Barnabas here, it says Antioch. There was, so now we go over to all scripture is God breathed, right? Timothy, and you read in verse 10, you, however, know all about my teaching, my way of life, my purpose, my faith, uh, patience, love, and endurance, persecutions and sufferings, what kinds of things happened to me in Antioch. Then you skip down and it says all scripture was God to breathe. Timothy, watch your doctrine. And you're telling me that this was before James was put into any scriptures. Now you're telling me that you're going to accept James who basically Paul was preaching against because men from James were giving him problems in Antioch. It's all right there in black and white. It can, be, it can be read and found. All you have to do is do a little bit of digging and you can see it. Anyway, um, thank you.